All right, we are all familiar with how chaotic and loud airports can be. It's overwhelming for many of us, not to mention travelers who may be affected by sensory issues. Unfamiliar sounds, a change in schedule, limited food choices, all of these things can be really upsetting to kids with autism. But there are ways to make air travel a little less stressful. Here to tell us about some of the best practices is John Sutter. He created TravelingWiki.com. I'm so grateful that you reached out to me this week as you're in town. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor to, to talk about this topic today. So people who don't deal with autism in their everyday life probably don't understand why this is difficult for really anybody with autism. Why is it hard? Well, I'll preface it by saying autism is a spectrum. So every situation is unique. But with that being said, crowds, noise, areas of high stimulation, change, mm -hmm. all of those things can present a challenge to a family impacted by neurodiversity, to an individual, to a group of people. So that's why this resource exists. Okay, I wish I would have known about this last year. Yeah. <laughs> I think our producer Lisa is gonna put up some pictures and videos that I sent her from a trip that I took last spring with yep. my son, Michael Francis, who was seven at the time. Um, he's autistic. He's not totally nonverbal, but has very limited language and communication skills. And um, he gets overstimulated very, very easily. And right. Um, there were times when this was this whole experience was just a hot, hot mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what are some um, tips that you would give someone like me who's traveling with an autistic child like this? Well, I would say pre preparation is mm -hmm. critical. And the reason we built or I built Traveling Wiki, and I, I say we actually because it's really a community of people throughout the United States and quite frankly the world, Preparation allows you to go on the website, Traveling Wiki, to find the resources in airports, not only where you're departing from, but also making decisions at the time you plan your trip, where to connect, if you're mm. connecting, where you, your arrival airport is, because that becomes the origin of your return. There are other stakeholders involved than just the airport. Obviously, the airline controls what happens inside the plane. TSA, we're a partner for TSA Cares. Mm -hmm. uh, we do all this work for free and we've, we, we have an MOU with TSA to be a partner so you can get help from TSA at the checkpoint. They refer to us so that your whole journey can, it, can be seamless. The checkpoint, in the airport, in the airline, I'm sorry, on the airplane, all of that whole experience can be seamless. So back to your question, preparation allows you mm -hmm. to have a much higher likelihood of a uh, seamless journey. Yeah, I know even the return trip home, my adult son traveled with me and my two little, little kids. Yeah. And um, we, uh, on the way home, we were like, okay, we got this. Like, you know, we kind of had more um, strategies in place to deal yeah. with some of the behaviors that were a struggle. But I think it's tough for people to understand that for kids with autism, just things like waiting in line or having to stay seated, um, those are like monumentally hard things for them to, to do. Absolutely. And you know, through the community of resources that are available when, when you prepare, like in Iowa here, I've met with the Autism Society of Iowa, mm -hmm. I've met with ChildServe, we're linked from Balance Autism, which provides resources throughout Iowa and in Omaha, Nebraska for the autism community. Mm -hmm. By connecting those resources and engaging, again, it increases the likelihood that your entire family is going to have a seamless experience. There are so many resources and what we're trying to do in, in, in a way that's free and accessible to everyone is make that journey so much easier. So much of this too, uh, in my relatively limited experience thus yeah. far, comes down to education. I yeah. mean, not just education for parents and extended family, but then education for the community. Because, you know, we're coming in contact with all of these people in public spaces like airports who are like, what is going on with this kid? So we really need to mm -hmm. keep educating people about what they might be seeing in our children. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it does. I think the existence of these resources and the engagement of the community also helps others by s others seeing in the airport sensory rooms, seeing accommodations being made to make the, the travel experience seamless, allows everybody to get involved and everyone to become accustomed to, to, to what is, I think, helpful mm -hmm. uh, to make the journey successful. What would you say to people um, like me who have kids on the spectrum, who have some um, behavior issues and they're terrified to travel, they're scared to fly? 
What is so wonderful now is so many of the stakeholders I mentioned before have been doing acclimation journeys at the airport. Mm -hmm. So I participated one that Good Morning America filmed uh, along with an airline and a nonprofit in Hartford, Connecticut. And we were uh, the community of people, and I was observing at the time, but the community of people, including the autism community in that area in Connecticut, as well as the nonprofit and others, brought again, the autism community, to the airport to, to try out the ticket counter and yeah. experience what it's like to get your boarding pass, to go through security, to then go into the gate area, to go so on the plane. So you get to practice. You practice. It's yeah. an acclimation. And the sensory rooms sometimes have mock airplane cabins. As an example, in Pittsburgh, in Akron, you know, so many of these different airports around the country, there are sensory rooms, and some of them have an, it, what looks to be an inside of a plane. Yeah. And so you can practice with your child. I could talk to you for a long, long time, Jonathan, but we got to wrap things up. Let's make sure we give people your website so they know where to go to access all of this. This It is Traveling the Jaron, T-R-A-V-E-L-I-N-G, wiki, W-I-K-I dot com. This is work I do nonprofit completely for free because I, I am deeply passionate about helping in the autism community. There you will find a robust amount of information to help you prepare. We also link to TSA Cares. We, we link, we're, we're, uh, um, we were profiled in the December 2023 Special Olympics newsletter for the work mm -hmm. we're doing for um, in Georgia for Special Olympics. So this is, some, you'll find all sorts of links. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. I Thank appreciate you so your much. time and your work.